It's one of the most uncomfortable truths in human history. Tens of thousands of years ago, Homo sapiens didn't just encounter Neanderthals, they slept with them, and not once. Not in some rare mythical instance, but enough times that their DNA is still inside you right now. What was sex like between humans and Neanderthals? Was it violent, consensual, strategic? What dark truths lie in the fossil record and our genetic code? Let's go there. Let's talk about the secret mating history of our species, the one they don't teach you in school. Chapter 1. The First Encounter Picture this. It's 50,000 years ago. Homo sapiens, migrating out of Africa, arrive in Ice Age Europe, but they're not alone. Neanderthals have been here for hundreds of thousands of years. They know the terrain. They know the predators. They are physically powerful, robust, and adapted to this brutally cold world. When these two human species meet, the outcome isn't just war or peace. It's something far more intimate. Because almost immediately, they start mating. And the evidence isn't theory. It's carved into your chromosomes. In 2010, scientists completed the Neanderthal genome. The result was earth-shattering. Every person of non-African descent alive today has between 1% and 4% Neanderthal DNA. Which means your ancestors didn't just fight Neanderthals, they had sex with them, repeatedly. The mixing wasn't rare, it was common. It happened in Europe, in Asia, in the Middle East. It was enough to leave a lasting imprint in our biology, one that still affects your health, immunity, and even appearance. But how did it happen? That's where things get darker. Chapter 2 The Consent Question Let's be honest. When you hear sex between species, it raises questions. Were these romantic encounters? Was there consent? Or was it something much more violent? The truth is, we don't fully know. But the clues are troubling. First, all genetic data shows that most of the Neanderthal DNA in modern humans comes from Neanderthal males mating with Homo sapiens females, not the other way around, which suggests a very specific and uncomfortable dynamic. Neanderthal men taking human women. Given the size and strength differences, it's possible, even likely, that many of these encounters weren't consensual by modern standards. In fact, the DNA tells us something chilling. Whenever human males tried to father children with Neanderthal females, the offspring didn't survive or left no genetic legacy. The biological compatibility wasn't symmetrical. Neanderthal males fathered hybrid children who survived. Human males did not. Chapter 3. A Child of Two Worlds So what was a hybrid child like? Imagine being born into a clan as a child, with features not entirely like either parent. A slightly different skull shape, a mix of brain development patterns, possibly different skin tones or immune responses. Would they be accepted, feared? rejected. Some archaeologists believe these children may have been outcasts, evidence of cultural taboos surrounding interbreeding. Others argue they may have served as bridges between communities. But here's the real kicker. We found them. We've discovered fossil remains of actual Neanderthal Homo sapiens hybrids. Most famous is the boy from Lagar Velho in Portugal a skeleton with mixed features that almost certainly represents a child of both species. Chapter 4 The Biology of Neanderthal Sex So, let's talk biology. Could Neanderthals and Homo sapiens even reproduce naturally? Yes, despite being different species, they were genetically close enough to produce viable offspring, but there were complications. Hybrids were likely less fertile, especially males. This is a common feature in hybrid species. Think of mules, which are born from horses and donkeys, 
but can't reproduce themselves. That may explain why interbreeding didn't blur the lines between the two species completely. Even more fascinating, some genes from Neanderthals didn't survive in us at all. Natural selection appears to have purged many of them, especially those involved in testicular development and sperm production. In other words, nature slowly removed the parts that didn't work, but left behind what was useful. Some anthropologists believe Neanderthals and Homo sapiens didn't just interbreed randomly. It may have been strategic. In times of scarce resources, low population, and constant survival pressure, forming bonds through reproduction, even between species, may have been a way to survive. It's possible that some human females sought protection or resources from physically dominant Neanderthal males. Or, Neanderthal clans may have captured or assimilated small bands of Homo sapiens women, especially if their own population was shrinking. This wouldn't have been romantic. It would have been cold survival calculus. Here's what we know about the Neanderthal DNA you carry today. It influences your immune system, making you more resistant to some diseases and more vulnerable to others. It affects skin and hair color, possibly adapting us to low sunlight environments. It even influences mental health with links to depression, nicotine addiction, and sleep disorders. Some of your strengths and some of your weaknesses may be Neanderthal gifts. You are, in a very real sense, a mosaic of ancient decisions, ancient moments of intimacy, survival, and maybe coercion etched into your biology forever. Chapter 5 The Mystery of Neanderthal Extinction Here's the wildest part. Despite all this interbreeding, Neanderthals vanished around 40,000 years ago. Why? One theory is that interbreeding wasn't enough. Their populations were already fragile. Every child born to a Neanderthal mother and human father may have failed, biologically, to carry the line forward. Meanwhile, human Neanderthal hybrid children born to human mothers did survive but were raised in human tribes. Bit by bit, Neanderthal culture was erased, even as Neanderthal genes were absorbed. They didn't just go extinct, they were genetically consumed. Think about it. You are alive today because thousands of years ago, members of two species, Homo sapiens and Neanderthals, met in the freezing dark of prehistoric Europe and against all odds, they mated. That union didn't just leave a mark, it helped shape the modern human. It made you tougher, more adaptable, better suited to a dangerous world. But it also left scars, genetic ghosts, clues of strange ancient nights we'll never fully understand. Chapter 6 Was it love? We'll never know if any Homo sapiens and Neanderthals truly loved one another. We don't know if any of those hybrid children were raised as part of a family or abandoned. But recent finds of Neanderthal burial sites, of symbolic objects, and even possible cave art suggest they weren't brutes. They had emotion. They had culture. Maybe they even had love. Could a Neanderthal have fallen for a Homo sapiens? Could they have bonded, shared stories by the fire, raised children together? It's possible. And if that happened, even once, it's a story worth remembering. Eventually, the Neanderthals faded. Whether through war, starvation, or absorption, they disappeared. But they didn't leave nothing behind. They left pieces of themselves inside us, tiny sequences of code that whisper from the past. When you look in the mirror, some of what stares back at you comes from them. You are their legacy. Conclusion. The darkest secret in your blood. The story of human evolution isn't just a tale of survival. It's a tale 
of entanglement. Our species didn't just outcompete the Neanderthals, we mated with them. And whether those unions were brutal or tender, strategic or accidental, they shaped who we are. Because in every cell of your body, there's a secret, a dark, ancient echo of a different kind of human. Don't forget to subscribe for more shocking prehistoric truths and the untold secrets of ancient life to discover what life was really like in the world after the dinosaurs. Click here.